singing, playing, and listening. Uh, that's a fiqh question, and just refer to the fuqaha on that one. Well, I mean, everybody, why do we keep asking these questions over and over again? I, I've heard this question seriously. I mean, and, and alhamdulillah, I mean, I've studied it, and I'm, but I'm not going to waste my time answering the question. Seriously. We just ask these questions. Is riba halal? Can we buy a house on riba? Uh, can we do this? Can we do that? I mean, seriously. Well, I, we have to stop reinventing the wheel. What are the modern problems which need ishtihad, but are there qualified Muslims to make intellectual exercise? There's a lot now. We're, we're in an age with massive, we've got, these, these people are cloning animals. They're literally, they've got, uh, sh uh, they've got uh, cats that they put DNA of leopards, so they get leopard spots. They're crossing, I mean, they're unbelievable stuff they're doing. Mad people, completely insane. It's Frankenstein. It's mad scientists. Like this, I told this at a conference about talking about science and this man got up and said, I'm a nuclear physicist and I take offense to physics is good and this and that. I said, what's good about it? You told me what, good, you, you gave us the atom bomb? You know, I mean seriously, you gave us the atom bomb, this wonderful, remarkable improvement on, on the quality of life for the Hiroshima, people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I'm sure they're very grateful for your great contribution to the 20th century. And, and what right do people have to go around smashing atoms? Who gave them the right to go around and smash atoms? Seriously. I mean, they don't even know what they're doing. They go and just smash an atom with their nuclear accelerators just to watch what happens. There's absolutely no, they just want to watch what happens. It's a type of madness. And they're, they're deeply, uh, if you meet a lot of these people, and I have, I've met them, uh, and not all of them, and there's good in physics, engineering, and things like that. Handasa is a fard kifaya. So learning physics, I'm not saying don't learn physics, but recognize that we have a different methodology and a philosophy of science. And you meet a lot of these people, and they, they, they can't even sit and talk with human beings. They'd rather talk to a computer. They're, they're, I know people who work in Silicon Valley, engineers, and they tell me that they, they've got all these engineers on these computers, and, and when you come in to tell them something, they say, send it on my email. They don't want to interact with a human being. They'd rather interact with a computer. You see, so everybody's going to end up having sex with computers and everything. That's what they're doing now. It's not a joke. They've got uh, downloading all this pornography and things. But unfortunately, people aren't learning how to uh, ishtihad and things like that. Do you think Saudi Arabia applies complete sharia? Subhanallah. <laughs> do, you, do you see the Muslim preacher in the Muslim country who is thinking he is dealing with non-Muslims, emphasizing all the time aqidah, but fail to interpret this on this modern world? Uh, emphasis on aqidah. First of all, aqidah is dogma. I want to remind us, aqidah is not iman. Aqidah is dogma. The Muslims never emphasized Aqidah. What they emphasized was Iman. Aqidah is very simple. You can learn it in a few days with a, a, a good scholar. Sit down. There's Mutun. You learn them. I have a Mithun that I learned in the deserts of Mauritania. It's literally 20 lines of poetry. And the whole of the dogma is there. And you can learn that. That's a, emphasis on Aqidah is a sickness. It's a disease of the Muslim. We need to emphasize Iman. Tarbiyat al-Iman. Tazkiyat al-Nufus. Of, of all we sit around talking about, where is Allah? You don't even know where you are. Subhanallah. Uh, you talked about the secular, how these <laughs> turn people upside down. What attracted you to become a Muslim? Uh, Alhamdulillah, Hidayah, I became Muslim when I was 17, I was very fortunate, I had a, a serious car accident, made me think about uh, death and some, some other things, and Alhamdulillah, Allah uh, showed me Islam with at the hands of some people that I thought had a good understanding, and I became Muslim, and then I decided to go study uh, Islam because I wanted to, uh, to find out for myself, I mean part of the confusion of the age is people don't learn, they don't study anymore. You know, and the Rihla was part of the Islamic legacy of literally leaving your home and going and finding out what Islam is from people. And I went and, uh, and you know, alhamdulillah, there's uh, Muhammad Makkah who I haven't seen in years. When, when we first met, I didn't know Arabic. I didn't know, is that true? When you first met me? 
And alhamdulillah, I, he knows some of the sheikhs I studied with. I went and, and studied with people that, 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 that they have a good understanding of Islam, and that's what I wanted to get from them. You know, and, and that'll, that for me solved my, my confusions. Uh, you know, really. I mean, there's a lot of things that are bewildering, but alhamdulillah, the Islam to me is very clear. I mean, the Quran is mubeen. It, what mubeen also means clear, clarifying. You know, it's, it's clear and it's clarifying. You know, it makes things clear. So if you're confused, it's because you haven't really uh, studied the deen. And you get it from the people who know it. Don't get it from people who don't know it or who are as confused as you are, or who memorized a few slogans. Was it not a Razi who claimed that the, he only drank wine for medicine? Uh, there's many Razis, the Fakhruddin al Razi that I quoted, definitely not. Uh, uh, Ar-Razi or Ar-Farabi, great followers of Aristotelian thought. There are, Razi is from a uh, city in Persia called Rait, and there are many scholars named Razi, and there was a Razi who was an Aristotelian, but that is not Fakhr al-Din Ar-Razi who I was mentioning. Uh, how should we pay for goods cash only? The best thing is to use cash, and even this cash, be aware that it's also bank notes that are interest-bearing bonds. And the only reason they can print that paper is because they've been given, given permission by the banks. And they're based on selling bonds and these type of things. So the, even the cash is usury. I mean, it's, it's all, the, we're all covered in the dust of it, folks. What is your opinion on the end of the Roman Empire in relation to the rise of the church and the eventual rise of materialism? Well, the, the rise of the church in the Roman Empire is very interesting because I think that we're in the same type of situation and it's literally they are in the same serious decline of the Roman Empire and Islam is should play the role that Christianity played in the first revivification of the European society because Christianity despite what we say about it, it there are positive effects of it on, on, on these societies I mean even they recognize that the atrocities that they did were committed against religion not you know even though it was in the name of religion now the Muslims never did these things because our book teaches us literally to tolerate other religions and they don't have that right so but uh, you know there were positive effects I mean they did they did worship God in their own way and uh, and now's the time for Islam because Christianity is an unscientific religion it really uh, is is not in harmony with the age at all uh, Islam according to Octavio Paz who is a Nobel Prize winner from Mexico he said that we are literally on the brink of destruction. The only thing that will save us is a reunification of religion and science. And he said, and the only religion in the history of human society that has succeeded in doing that is Islam. That's what he said. That's their Nobel Prize winner. And, uh, and that's, but if we're not there to let them know what it is, you know, What is your comment on some Islamic organizations going through Kufr parliamentary system? As I understand that to go through this system is haram. Could you please enlighten me on this? I, I don't really know about it. Like uh, they might be referring to this thing called the Parliament of Islam or, or Muslims. I don't know. I've just heard it. I have nothing about it. The actual systems in Islam, uh, government systems, it's, it's rather open based. Um, there, there is a type of legislation that takes place in Islam based on maslaha. It's what Imam Malik radiallahu in his usul called maslaha al-mursala, like traffic laws. That's part of Sharia, traffic laws, literally based on this idea of maslaha al-mursala. And uh, and to disobey traffic laws is actually considered by the the ulama as a type of wrong action because the maslaha, the reason for the traffic laws is to maintain safety of the people driving. So if you abuse those laws, you endanger yourself and others, which is haram. So this is a type of qiyas that's used. And there's Muslims, they don't, you know, they just run red lights and don't, uh, you know, don't care. And takbir, Allahu Akbar, kufr laws, right? <laughs> what is